Welcome to Crazy Hank TV. We've assembled the greatest fans of Game of Thrones has ever been in one room or one television or wh whatever monitor we have at one time. We have Chris. Hello. And Nick. Hey. From the Ramblecast from the Jane Jack Podcasting Network. And also Nick from the, what do we call it? Game of Thrones podcast. Game of Thrones podcast. With Jay Jack and Nick. It's not that hard, Jack. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't <laughs> enter, enter said show, then <laughs> podcast. No. Yeah, I try to remember these things, but it's just, you know. <laughs> so we just had probably one of, was, well, uh, I'll say, I, I thought it was one of the better, ep more exciting episodes, more anticipated episodes, I guess, uh, The Long Night. So, Chris, I didn't pretty much know what Nick thought of it. What did you think of The Long Night? Oh, I thought it was great. I mean, I thought it was, it was um, I, I feel like the, the lead up to this episode was, was big. Obviously the first two episodes are kind of like, you know, I mean, episode one was like, you know, Winterfell high school reunion. And then, <laughs> you know, the, the second episode was like, you know, the, the scene from scenes from like Armageddon when they're going out doing crazy stuff before the last, you know, I, the last minute of the last. Good, good take. I didn't think about that. Um, and then this one is kind of like the the culmination of of of, of all that build up and obviously like the the multiple seasons of, of build up for the, the this battle that we just knew was going to be coming. Um, and I, I I'll be honest with you, I, I thought the the battle itself exceeded my expectations as far as uh, what I thought was going to be. Um, I know there's a lot of people uh, complaining on you know online about how it was so like like not just like metaphysically dark, but like physically dark um and hard to, to to watch um but i think that the way that they the cinematography the way they shot the, the show the way they the way they kind of handled the direction of the show it lent itself to almost like a feel of horror right which is what you kind of almost felt the same way these characters are feeling going into this crazy crazy battle um a lot of people are comparing it to the battle um from game uh Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um and yeah, very very similar, you know, but I feel like it's it's even more of a, it was even more of a manic battle because these these zombies for better for better or worse for you know, I don't know that's a great term, but essentially they were zombies with just like with no um no battle strategy or reason for what they do. They just have a crazy mass of 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 bodies just like hurtling forward and that right. it, it was it was a very um like a perilous fight it was it wasn't a good fight to get ramped up for in which i think they did a a pretty cool job trying <laughs> in the beginning like a, i think even everybody in the, that was watching it was like all right dothraki with with flaming weapons this is pretty ba or right, let's go and then 5 seconds later uh -oh. no more dothraki yeah. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I thought it was great. I thought the, uh, I thought the, I don't want to go too far into it, but I think, I think the battle was, was, was awesome. It was, it, it never really gave you a false sense of security. Like they're going to win. Um, and you kind of knew there's going to have to be some type of, you know, crazy ending to it. And I think they handled it very well, uh, in which the way they, they did. So with, uh, with the kind of like the Arya Jon Snow, um, lines merging together which is good um so overall i thought the the episode was awesome and uh, i haven't read the books and i know this hasn't been written yet either i presume no. um but uh, as someone who's been invested in watching the show for as long as i have I, I thought it was a very satisfying um conclusion to that war and introduction to the next it was funny like you should just talk about the like the military aspect of it like the, the I think yesterday I saw a few articles from like military experts talking about how strategically it was one of the dumbest battle plans ever <laughs> conceived. <laughs> cause it was like, like, it was. Yeah. Cause they were like, you don't put your cavalry, you know, in the front and you don't send them out into the darkness. Like, you know, cavalry right. is usually used from like a pincer move, you know, or like from the side, like you get your enemy in front of you and then you try to hit them and throw them off. And it's like, you know, you just sent them out to their deaths for no reason. Well, but anyway, so, something I would thought about when Chris was talking. Now you talking about the, sending the Dothraki out first. Yeah, this was Jon Snow's game plan, right? He he, it was his battle plan, right? Mm -hmm. We assume so. Yeah. So could Jon Snow have been using sent the Dothraki out there first because that's Danny's most loyal? Uh, you know, one of well, his most loyal. Well, well, yeah, totally too. far more. Yeah, I know, but they were also getting killed too. Yeah. So I'm saying maybe he did this on purpose to he can get the throne. 
he he does he knows nothing. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's that smart to be honest. I was just throwing it out there for argument's sake, but I said, yeah. you know, if if you if he had an evil side to him, well, he didn't really have that many. Yeah, he didn't have that many soldiers left anyway after the Battle of the Bastards. You know, like there's a few northern houses left, and yeah, some wildlings, and that's really well, that's what I'm saying. He'll never you know. get the throne unless he gets kills off some of her troops. No, because I know I said it, I said it in our podcast that. What struck me was Grey Worm was who shows no, very, barely any emotion. You, you could see and sense fear in him. Here's this guy on the battlefield and whatever you know what he's been through his whole life, and he was terrified. And most of the people on there, you know, uh, uh, Brianna Tark, Sir. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I should call her Sir, right? Sir Brianna Tark. Yeah. So, yeah. She she he was she was scared. Jamie, um, Jamie was scared. They were all terrified. And you have these soldiers that have been in battle. They just. Yeah. I just thought they did a great job in portraying that. Yeah, they, you, you saw a side of them. There's there's a there's a, a portion of the, your Game of Thrones podcast where you have a, a, a specific contributor to the show shares their perspective on things they think <laughs> that didn't go quite the way they should. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm talking about Nick picks. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually have a few Boston bitches <laughs> <laughs> to provide. Um, I mean, first, along with what you just said, you know, the, the fear that was in the eyes of all these of, of all these um, characters that we know and love, and the, and how they how they uh, ended up performing on the battlefield. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves was like was was actually Samuel Tarley. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. Like he was out there, and like he was just like laying down, like on a bag of bodies, just like waving a freaking blade around, like thinking he's like, I'm sorry, but like, like all those those warriors that were out there, that they, they they didn't last, you know, five seconds. And and you got Samuel, you got Samuel Tarley laying on his back, just waving a, a blade. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, like, I, I, like, I said, taking out zombies left, like just. Or whites, or you want to call them, uh, just taking them out left and right, like he was like a, I don't know. It was just, yeah. Well, yeah. I said, I said on the podcast, I said best strategy is to stay you no, know, be nowhere near Sam. Yeah, that's then, true. Because you were going to die. And then I even talked about that too. It's like you know, towards the end, when you see Sam on his back, Chris, that uh, you know, because you assume John at this point is going to go kill the Night's King. You know, he's, he's in pursuit, you know, all this, and he turns and he sees Sam on his back, like just crying, like. Ah! Like and then he turns, he kind of looks at him, and then he turns and like leaves Sam to yeah, his own Yeah, he, he's like, "Yeah, sorry, dude." Yeah, and yeah. I just, I thought that was hilarious because, like, I can't tell you're crying. Yeah, he was like, "Well, it's like I'm not falling for that trap, Sam. You already get too many people killed." <laughs> <laughs> I, I had another complaint too because you had the Ring of Fire, right? You know, maybe it's been cool to have Johnny Cash there or something, but shouldn't the Ring of Fire have been further out? There should have been too, and ha- or yeah, and had the soldiers behind the fire, not in front, because you saw what happened where. And then they just sat there and let the, them these them stand there without trying to kill them. Well, and then they finally yeah. realized, you know, the uh, the Knights King fit, fit, said, you know, said, okay, we get enough of these guys. They'll build a bridge, but still, it was narrow. And if they had the soldiers on the other side, they could have been picking them off as they came across. Well, if you look at the very beginning of the episode, and when Danny and John are looking down. They basically only fortified that one side of Winterfell that was done the north. And it's like yeah. if really, if really, if the Night's King wanted to have a really easy victory, he could have just maneuvered his soldiers around to the rear or to the side and attacked there, and it, all the defenses would have been pointless. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's also a level of like how much of that stuff should a fan argue? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whatever. Like it was, it was a pretty awesome battle. I mean, but. It, one other nitpick that I had, or Boston bitch that I had, was um, <laughs> let's go next. Uh, yeah, so okay, so back when we first discovered that Danny was like the mother of dragons, right? Mm-hmm. You know, she she burned herself in an effigy on top of that inside that building and burned came all out her, burned all her clothes off, which yeah. is yeah, which is cool. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, comes out and she's the, the the unburned, right? And that's like her family, right? Is that like the fa- family trait? It is, but it's not in every Targaryen. Okay, all right. Then that kind of put a little bit of just, a hole. It's just in, like in it's just like your bread. Or is it just Yeah, it's bread? just it's just a genetic thing. Like, you know, you, you might have blue eyes and you, you know, someone else might have green eyes. It's just this or red hair. Yeah, or red hair. Yeah. 
I was, I was waiting for John just to just to like take that blast like a man. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. And be like, hey man, I, I'm unburned too. You know? got, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, he's already been burnt. He's burnt in season one. Oh, that's right. You're right. Uh, and so that's why you know that John's not. He is a Targaryen, but he's not like Danny. You know? He's yeah. not. Yeah. And no, even that's what he's, that's like, he's a burnable Targaryen. He's a burnable Targaryen. Yeah. It's Episode the same, title. It's, just, it's the same as. <laughs> it's the same as. Uh, crap it was like with dragon riders like not everyone can ride a dragon and that's what was kind of weird with john all of a sudden just being able to jump on it and do it you're like it, it takes practice and so that's why you can't charge for dragon rides right because some people can't do it <laughs> all right a question for you guys okay who is the night king oh uh, well yeah I mean, and the most popular, you know, he's theory, a jerk. Right? That's what I think he is. Well, the most popular theory is that it's Bran. You know, yeah, it makes total sense for it to be Bran. I don't know if the show will go that route. Well, with three episodes left, yeah. Well, you still could do it. You know, yeah. that he has to somehow go in the past and warg into him to make assure something else happens. You know, that, that happens yeah. later in the future. You know, now. Where where did the the uh, Valyrian steel blade that Arya did the deed with? Where did that come from? That is a lot of history. Um, yep, it's uh, it's first shown in season one. It's the blade that attempts to kill Bran, mm-hmm. and then uh, someone who acquires it, Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion. Had, well, they they say Littlefinger when he finds it says that he lost it in a bet to Tyrion, and so that's why Caitlyn Stark, you know, has justification to arrest Tyrion in season one. Right. Oh, that's right. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, and then someone else acquires it, but basically, Littlefinger ends up getting it back and giving it to Bran. Mm-hmm. You know, then said, you know, like here's you know the the knife that tried to kill you. You know, and then that's when he kind of goes. Chaos is a ladder. What Bran says, you know, because he basically knows it's him that tried to kill him. Right. So the, that the reason I those are you know guided discovery questions as I like to call them. Um, that, that kind of lends into the, my my feeling and theory of Bran being the uh, the Night King. So, all right. So this battle is over. Blah blah blah. Bran survives. Mm-hmm. Bran will most likely survive the series. Right. So. Well, then, then one would think that okay, so Bran's got lots of time on his hands to go well back in time in war into specific things and so forth and so on. So, what if he goes back in time so many times that he actually finds himself trapped as the Night King? Well, yeah, that's that's the theory, right? That's, that's what happens is that so he also, you guys are blowing my mind here, also <laughs> delivers said blade. To a point in time, or in in one of his journeys, knowing that that blade would then have a path of getting back to him, right? right. To then set himself up, essentially, right to, to kill, kill him. himself, himself, right? right. Like that, that, that's his, his plan on how to rid himself of his entrapment into this whole thing. Um, thinking of thinking on, like along the lines of, um, I was going to say, like I, I feel like there's just there's just been so many like hints towards like the things that he says of like everything you've done has, has brought you to this point. Right. Or everything you've done so far is in, in your journeys have brought, has brought you here almost as if it's all been brands master plan, right. To, right. to make this happen. So I wouldn't be surprised that if we, if we hear stories about or see any subsequent series about the show or even maybe a flash forward, perhaps, you know, in the season finale, that we might see uh, a Bran a la Hodor scene mm-hmm. of him flashing back as an old man Bran um, to, you know. Well, basically what has to happen. Kill himself. Is he needs to, one, warg into the, the person who becomes the Night King. And then his body in his time has to die. And then he would be trapped. His consciousness would be trapped in that body. And what happens is, is that you do still have some control, but if you're dead, you know, eventually you just kind of merge into that person. And so parts so they, of you will be lost. They have time to do this in three episodes. I think no. you just, you could show it pretty quickly. If you I'll want show to show it. Yeah. 
It's gonna be a flash forward. That's my prediction. You're, you're well, gonna do you, see a you flash think the fans? the fan, if it's like a two minute thing, are the fans gonna like go? Oh, come on. Well, you could do it in two minutes. The same as if they did with Night King when he got created. You're just kind of showing like, uh, I don't know. Like you'd have to talk. Like you could easily say uh, you have a scene, basically Bran finally speaking and saying, you know, like, <laughs> you know, asking John or asking someone, Arya. It could be anybody saying like, hey, I have to do something, and I have to ask you to do something you're not going to want to do, you know, but in order to assure this outcome, I have to go back and you have to kill me, you know, and, Ooh. and that would make total sense. You think it'd be, it'd be Arya he'd pick or would it be Jon Snow? It, it, who knows? It just, as long as someone does the deed, you know. So we're, we're talking like a Kevorkian esque present t- tense brand. Yeah. Forcing himself back into the. Or, I'm trying Ooh. to think, I'm trying to think maybe it would be Sam. It could be Sam. <laughs> well, I think I think we just discovered the ending of Game of Thrones. Yeah, there we go. We solved it. Yeah. Uh, who do you think is going to kill Cersei? I, that, that, I think it's going to be Arya wearing a, a Jamie mask. I it's going to be Jamie wearing his own mask. I think it's gonna, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be I think it's Jamie. I think he has he, he to get his complete redemption. I think he has to do it. And it'll be hard. It'll be it, it. would be a hard scene for him to do too, because he he loves his sister. Oh That's yeah. What he's I mean, he loves her, and to but, no. and, and she is pregnant with his child. Yeah, but you know, you can see she's already ready to to kill him. You know, I know. Oh, trying, I, to, well, trying to have her on. But she doesn't have a heart. I'm, I'm changing my I'm changing my prediction. Okay. <laughs> I think that um, the writers are going to give Sansa Stark some comeuppance. I don't see her coming down from the north, though. I really don't. I've been on Team Sansa for all season. I I think she could be the one, the final person sitting on the throne. Hmm. I, I've been saying that for a couple weeks now. I just I believe, just because there might not be anybody left. But I think she's grown so much as a person from where she was when you know when the first season where all she wanted to be was a pr- a princess or a, you know a queen. Right. She's she's you know. Obviously, what's happened to her in the you know the eight seasons has been tragic, and it's 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 hardened her. So I think yeah. she's her mom. She's like her mom. Her mom is was very cutthroat. <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, are, are we going to see her? <laughs> no, no. Le- uh, Lady Stoneheart is in the books, and uh, they just the show producers decided not to do it. I don't know why. Because hmm. uh, it it would have been an interesting. Uh, I know people were, for the longest time were waiting for it because basically what happens is you know she gets she found in the river you know floating down so her body was thrown in the river after the red wedding and Barrett Dondarrion uh, the guy who right. has the gift that saved Arya in the show basically gives up I think his gift into to her okay and so he dies and then she takes on his immortality. Yeah, I, I, I've I've read. I think, uh, well, I don't, what book is that? It's book. F- it's the end of book f- three is when Lady on Stoneheart makes her first appearance. But I think it's book four that explains what happened. All right, yeah, because I think I read the first three books and gave up after that. Well, I mean, those are the, the best three. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends on like what kind of writing it's style you like. like. Years ago. Yeah, I mean, same as me. I haven't read the books actually. Since 2011, uh, I, read, I read the first book in college. Mm-hmm. So that was no. Was it college? When did it what, come out? Which one? The books? First book, yeah. The first book came out in 1996. Right? Yeah, so I, I, read, I definitely read that in college. That would that would have been early 2000s. I read yeah. that book. Yeah, the second one came out in 99 or 98, and the third one came out in 2001. Yeah, and then the fourth one 2005, and then the sixth book. Well, the the fifth book came out in 2011. And the other books we're not going to get. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then there's been so many he's other. Totally gonna, he's totally going to die, dude. He's not going to finish it. <laughs> uh, there's so many other like side books and histories and stuff that's been released, and you know, so you definitely piques your interest, and you might go back and read a chapter here or there. Or, you know, that's what I've done most of the time when I'm puzzled, stumped on something. Well, mm. I thought this was a fantastic talk. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, you you experts, you guys. You. <laughs> I'm, I'm no expert. expert. 
<laughs> I'm so long for the ride. But uh, thanks for joining us. That, that's all we got. Uh, subscribe, tell a friend, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Crazy Hank. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> that's me.